everyone. Welcome to another episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Leslie Richardson, and welcome back to our ongoing mini series that we've been doing about Visual Studio dot extensibility, the brand new latest, greatest out of process extensibility model as far as the eye can see. And uh, basically in this mini series, if you're new to it, we've been exploring all of the different ways you can extend Visual Studio using this new model through all of the new samples that have recently been introduced on the corresponding repository, which you can check out in the link below. So joining me today to talk about the tool window specifically and how you can extend that is Mateo from the Visual Studio Extensibility team. Hey, Mateo. Hi, Leslie. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, ready for the demo. Sweet. So before we jump into the demo, tell us a little bit about yourself. What have you been working on lately? I'm uh, the principal software engineer on the Visual Studio Extensibility team, uh, and uh, I've been working for the past few years uh, on uh, Visual Studio Extensibility, our new extension platform. And uh, uh, so some time ago, I work on, uh, on tool windows. That's what we have been presenting today. And uh, lately, I've been working on settings uh, uh, and uh, some new cool features to come. So just so we're all on the same page, what do we mean when we say the tool window? <laughs> Which one? So, I feel like I think multiple things. So tool windows are these uh, small little windows uh, that are everywhere in Visual Studio, uh, like Solution Explorer, for example. Uh, it's a tool window. So if you want to create uh, uh, one for your own, uh, these are the APIs that you use to do it. I actually never thought of the Solution Explorer as a tool window, so that's good to know. Yeah, most things in Visual Studio are to believe this. Nice. Cool. So I'm curious to see how we can extend all everything then. Uh, so I will be presenting one of our samples uh, that are available on our GitHub repo. Uh, this is a tool window sample. And uh, as all uh, uh, Visual Studio extensibility extensions, uh, they start uh, with a cluster that extends extensions. Uh, and uh, it is contributed to Visual Studio using the Visual Studio contribution attribute and it has some metadata and the usual stuff that we have already seen. If we wanted to add an extension uh, uh, to the window to this extension, uh, we could just go and uh, uh, do add new item and choose that we wanted to add a tool window and uh, that creates a tool window and the command uh, that will allow the tool window to show. And then we have a very good uh, starting point but in this case, the sample already has one, so we can just go and uh, uh, look at the code. That's great. So I guess tool, tool windows are so omnipresent in VS that they get its own uh, scaffolding <laughs> to choose from. That's pretty nice. Yes. Yeah. This uh, create a tool window requires creating quite a few files. So we wanted to make sure that it's uh, uh, easy to get everything set up uh, uh, in a way that's, uh, that's intuitive and uh, puts you uh, with the right foot forward. So um, as I mentioned, uh, uh, we are going to have a command. The command uh, allows us to make the tool window visible. Um, so this is the same as uh, the command uh, that Murphy showed uh, in uh, the last episode. Uh, the classics and commands uh, this contributor to the S. Uh, this is a very common pattern. In this case, uh, I placed it uh, in the extension menu. And uh, uh, when it's clicked, it calls uh, the show tool window async method, uh, uh, taking as a parameter the class uh, um, that implements the tool window that I want to show. Very simple. When it comes to the actual implementation of the tool window, um, that's also not too much code. Again, we have a class, uh, extend tool windows, uh, and uh, as, of, ev as we do every time, uh, uh, we add the Visual Studio contribution attribute to say this mm -hmm. is supposed to be contributed to Visual Studio. So for that, uh, we set a title for it. Uh, if we want to be nice, uh, this should be uh, coming from a resource file so that it's uh, localized. It has uh, a tool window configuration, uh, which uh, describes where this tool window goes. So by default, uh, it will go uh, into the document well, and uh, it also has uh, a, its own toolbar. Cool. So speaking of the toolbar, I'm noticing that there's another contribution attribute defined above that one. What's the deal with that? I thought you only had to apply it for like basically each related file. Oh, so every time you contribute uh, a, an entity to Visual Studio, you 
use the contribution attribute. So in this case, this, this file is contributing to separate entities, the tool window and the toolbar. And then the toolbar happens to be used as a toolbar for the tool window, but it could be reused in other places as well. In this case, uh, we have uh, a Visual Studio contribution for uh, the tool window. And uh, uh, we kind of know that the tool window is supposed to be contributed because it implements uh, the iVisual Studio contribution class. So I mean, this is the class that if we want to use it with Visual Studio, it should be contributed. But also it has uh, this uh, other static property uh, that's uh, also contributed as, as uh, its own entity. And in this case, uh, we know that it can be contributed because uh, it uh, uh, implements the iVisual Studio contribution property. Awesome. Makes sense. Um, yeah, except for that, uh, we have uh, the initialize a sync method uh, that does the initialization for the tool window. In this case, it creates uh, the data context uh, that uh, is going to, to be uh, data bound with WPF uh, to control that fits the tool window and uh, a get content async, uh, which is uh, a method that uh, Visual Studio will call to retrieve uh, what's supposed to be shared. And it's supposed to return uh, an I remote user control. Remote user control uh, is part of this remote UI functionality that uh, allows uh, uh, out of process extensions to show WPF uh, uh, content uh, inside of Visual Studio. It builds on top of WPF, uh, but it allows you to use WPF from outside of the event uh, uh, process. Yeah, by the way, if you happen to be in PROC, uh, you can still use remote UI and they remote user control, or you can just use a normal uh, WPF control and use the WPF control wrapper class uh, to just return a normal WPF control uh, as content for your tool with. Cool, so either one works when you're in, in process. process? Yeah, they both work out of process. Uh, you have to stick with remote UI. Nice. I like having options. Yeah. So um, uh, if we look uh, at the tool window control, this is very simple. Uh, implements a remote user control and uh, uh, takes uh, uh, whatever you want to data bind to the user control thread, uh, very clean. Remote UI uh, uses uh, the MVVM kind of structure. This is a limitation that we have to follow because uh, this content uh, is all defined out of process, uh, but it is uh, shown in process. So we need to be able to data bind the, the data across different processes. For this reason, we have a bunch of additional uh, restrictions. And one of them uh, is that we cannot add uh, any uh, code behind for remote UI, uh, remote user control. Gotcha. So those are restrictions that they're, they're there for a reason. <laughs> They are there for a reason. Uh, yes, lots of people who use uh, WPF uh, may argue that those are good principle to begin with. Uh, but in this case, uh, we have them for a reason because uh, uh, we have to make this work across processes. And then also we have the synchronization context um, listed there. Can you explain a little more about that? Oh yeah, this is, uh, this is a bit of a weird thing that's not used uh, in this particular sample. Uh, but when you create uh, a, a remote user control, you can pass your own synchronization process. And you do that in case you want your extensions to be a little bit more like uh, a normal WPF application where you have uh, a main thread. Uh, so for example, you could pass uh, a non-concurrent synchronization context uh, so that uh, multiple callbacks uh, are not, uh, um, they, they don't come up over left. But in general, it's a bit of an advanced context. Uh, so sticking to our love to begin with, it's a probably a good choice. And that, yeah, that file seems pretty straightforward. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now let's look at something that is a slightly less straightforward. Uh, this is uh, the data uh, that we are data binding to. Uh, so, so my tool windows data, uh, just as a reminder, uh, that's uh, what we created here and we set this data context. Uh, for the tool window and we pass the uh, as a parameter to uh, the remote user control. So when we look at the data, uh, this, uh, this shows a, a few of the main differences in using remote UI compared to using uh, 
uh, Norman WPF. So first of all, uh, uh, there's a data contract attribute here and there's a data member attribute there. Uh, this is because this data is going to be uh, processed across services. So by doing this, uh, you're marking that which properties uh, you want to replicate uh, inside of the event process so that they can be data bound to the other main difference uh, that we have here uh, compared to WPF uh, is that we are using this async commands. So they implement the iAsync command, uh, while in normal WPF uh, you would uh, implement uh, i command. In terms of actual implementation, they are very, very similar, but the callback is asynchronous uh, because everything has to be asynchronous uh, uh, when uh, you work uh, across processes. But except for that, they work relatively similar. They take a command parameter, so you can you can pass data back to your um, to your command when you're invoking, for example, when a button is clicked or things like that. And uh, uh, the last part uh, of uh, the extension is going to be the actual XAML file for the control. This is interestingly enough uh, a slightly different than a normal uh, WPF XAML file. So if I look at the properties of this, this is defined as an embedded resource, uh, not as a page. This XAML file is not compiled uh, into this DLL, uh, it's actually saved as a text file uh, uh, inside the DLL and it is uh, transferred to Visual Studio and Visual Studio will uh, basically reiterate it into uh, a WPF component. But except for that, this is straight normal WPF. There are a couple of things uh, that are worth noting. For example, uh, uh, this new two namespaces that come from the Shell 15 assembly. Uh, we are getting styles and colors that then we can use across uh, the, uh, the XAML to style uh, the tool window to follow whatever is the VS theme. So, uh, nice. This so, this would, so if you want your extension to organically be a part of VS, yes, it doesn't have to look like a glaring, oh my gosh, this is in Times New Roman and then the rest is <laughs> a totally different font or something. Yes, absolutely. And when you switch team, it will move from dark to light automatically. Uh, so uh, cool. it's uh, all, all of that uh, is uh, is done for free as long as you use uh, the colors uh, and the styles from uh, uh, from Shell Fifteen. Cool. Is that and that's there by default when you if you were to use the scaffolding to create the tool window? I uh, believe styles. Honestly, I don't I don't remember, but I believe they are. They are usually in, our, in all our samples so together with the uh, uh, VS uh, namespace, uh, which con contains some very specific XAML concepts uh, that we use in Remote UI. And uh, one in particular is shown here, the VS image that's uh, used to show uh, as a uh, substitute for the image control. Uh, it allows to show a uh, an image that comes uh, out either from the extension or from uh, the um, image uh, Visual Studio Image Gallery. So clear window content uh, is uh, uh, from the Visual Studio Image Gallery, while the full text uh, is here uh, packaged with the extension. This is simply uh, a content file in the images folder, uh, and it is automatically packaged available to be used. Technically, you could go full, fully rogue and. <laughs> Just be like, I want an extension that stands out from everything, uses my own images and icons and stuff, and doesn't adhere to VS whatsoever. Absolutely. You can just uh, create uh, your uh, your images folder and uh, drop your images there. And they will be passaged with the extension. Uh, and we have samples for this. So, and everything else in here, it's just a normal WPF uh, uh, that sticks to the MPDM paradigm. Uh, yeah, if we want to see it in action, I do. I, I have my other Visual Studio, so as I promised, there's uh, a command uh, in uh, uh, the extension menu. You click it, uh, you get uh, your tool window, and uh, uh, you have the toolbar that you shared before, and uh, this is the stuff that I define the XAML. Uh, what's supposed to do is... Uh, oh, the sure, Paul. It's uh, super advanced stuff. Yep, really good. I can't wait to download this extension. Perfect. Uh, that's all for the demo. Great. I love that. I, I think even though there's a lot of a lot more files involved with tool window creation or extend, extending the tool windows, there's it's still pretty straightforward and the way it's broken up 
makes sense. It's like you have your data binding separate from like where your commands are at and separate from where you're actually defining the entity in the first place. So, <laughs> and my suggestion is uh, uh, do add item, uh, use the template. It will create all these files for you. Uh, yeah, even better. Then uh, you can modify from there to put the command in the right menu and uh, define your XAML and change uh, uh, your data class uh, to be to have whatever properties you need and so on. But it's a good starting point. I'm looking forward to seeing what other cool tool windows get created with this new model and all of its related files. So, Mateo, thank you for sharing. Absolutely. Thank you. Cool. And thanks, viewers, for watching. If you want to check this out, you can. We have all of the samples, both the ones we've talked about so far in this mini series and ones we haven't talked about yet. They're all available on the Visual Studio.extensibility repo link below. So until next time, where we talk about another sample and how to extend yet another common part of Visual Studio, stay tuned for that and happy coding. Mm -hmm.